Hey folks, uh, Les here. Another week, uh, six is one behind the scenes weekly. Uh, kind of like last week, running a little bit late getting this in this week. Um, but that's a good thing for us. It means we're really busy. So what you see going on right here is um, a two-page spread coming together for Apocalypse Girl. Uh, so this is just kind of giving you a look inside uh, uh, the process of penciling. Um, using Manga Studio and uh, just some of the, the craziness that goes on there. Um, what you see at the moment is um, holding his shift key while clicking. Uh, you know, with the, I've got the pen tool. If you hold the shift key and click, you'll get the straight line version of the tool that allows you to, to you know, knock in uh, straight, even width lines. Um, it's kind of cool, kind of neat. Um, and what I'm doing at the moment is just roughing in uh, a panel layout, some ideas for the the way that I want this page to uh, to work out. So uh, anyway, um, here we're going to jump over uh, this large area. This is a scene where the girl is um, she's 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 badly wounded and. Uh, um, it's a it's a real dramatic moment where she falls to the ground and she's uh, she's about to lose consciousness. So what I'm doing over here is just just roughing in some basic shapes um, and the underdrawing that's going to build up the girl um, in the the main the the giant panel that runs across these two pages, this big meta panel where um, she's she's down on the ground and about to pass out. One thing you might be uh, curious about is uh, why my pages are taking up so little of the actual uh, document area or the the, the stage inside uh, Manga Studio here. And what I do sometimes when I'm roughing out pages is I'll zoom out really, really far and uh, set up a, a pencil tool that's kind of a, a large, fat tool um, so that I can... Uh, basically just rough on this uh, from a from a distance and be able to see kind of the overall shapes uh, blown up um, and uh, it, it's it's really interesting I think sometimes when you just when you're able to zoom out and you're working with large strokes and large shapes uh, it helps build your composition and uh, also can help you see the structure of things whereas when you're up close you may um, start to become fixated on details that you have in mind that you want to work on. So, um, pretty often I'll zoom out really far and scribble some lines in here and there and, and rough in some shapes to try and uh, uh, build up uh, my forms in a way that uh, just makes me look at it a little differently. So here we're roughing in uh, the glove on this arm and uh, and building up the, the forms for the arm. Now you can see that uh, you know my initial guides um, and underdrawing, I'm kind of ignoring those and, and I don't know, just sort of, it, it's all spitballing really. I mean, it, it's kind of funny, you know, you try to to give some ideas about drawing and about art and all that, but so much of it's just experimentation that uh, you know the the one of the best things you can do is just be willing to scribble and noodle around and see what comes out. Um, so uh, as I start to get forms that uh, that make sense to me and that that really look like what uh, what I know I'm going to need for the page, I'll erase some of the uh, the scribbly stuff out and then hardened up my lines a bit and kind of commit to those. Now even though I tend to uh, to pencil you know pretty loosely um, because uh, if I'm inking myself, uh, I actually 
the lion's share of the artwork gets done, at least in my opinion, gets done during the inking process. So I, I tend to pencil very, very loose at this point. Um, though sometimes I will go in, like on the arm you saw there, I'll go in and add myself some little tick marks and uh, little textural elements. Uh, and while the specific lines that I put down when penciling at this point, those those may or may not come out in the final inked piece, they do kind of represent a um, a guide for what I'm going to be doing at that point. So, at this early stage, so much of it is just refinement. It's it's just spitballing and refinement. Um, you know, sometimes I work with um, with references. Um, whether it be uh, photo references or actually anymore I, I use a lot of 3D references since our studio uh, we do you know really the, the bulk of the work that we do is actually 3D modeling and animation so um, for instance on Apocalypse Girl I have um, models 3D maquettes so on and so forth um, m much of which are, are rigged that I can set up as references um, and, and use those you know the same way you would look at a mannequin also I'll end up sometimes using um, uh, like in the there's a sequence of pages um, that this this is the ending of a fight sequence actually where she's fighting a couple of guys who are riding ATVs well uh, I decided to uh, to go the route of actually modeling my ATV and uh, and using the actual model placed inside Manga Studio as a guide for the way those would come out, and uh, you know that uh, you know it, uh, on the one hand, you know there's kind of a purist in me that says you know that's oh you know that's that's a cheat, but you know I think um, at the same time though you know it's like uh, I can use those kind of tools and get a consistency. Um, that I really like. I, I love consistency, especially in mechanical elements and in backgrounds. So, um, you know, from time to time, not not constantly, but from time to time, I'll use those kind of things. Um, I'll use use three D to uh, to get that kind of consistency. Um, so, when it's characters, my use of three D is much more limited and. Uh, I don't know, much more um, frugal because I don't want my characters on the page to look um, I don't want them to end up looking static. I want them to have the liveliness that uh, you know, good old fashioned hand drawn comics just th that's just inherent to uh, to comics. So while, I, while I'll use 3D from time to time um even occasionally using a 3D model the same way that I might uh, for a vehicle, the vast, vast, vast majority of the time if I'm using 3D for a character, it's going to be as a reference uh, or a placeholder or something just to use to, to try out you know, something, you know, a movement or a position. You know, um, sometimes, you know, sometimes you have a, a complete... Um, you just draw a blank in your head, you know, when when trying to 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 wing it with drawing uh, you know human figures over and over and over. Um, you know, sometimes you'll have a specific uh, bit of acting that you want the character to do, but you're having trouble getting it out of your head. So you know, traditionally we use uh, mannequins for that sort of thing, but now you know with the 3D. Um, capabilities you know well uh, it's it's cool to be able to pose you know instead of using a, a photo reference instead of having a, an actor on hand who uh, you know can put on a costume and uh, and I can take photos of that which is something we used to do a long time ago you know now we'll just we'll have a 3d model of it and uh, uh, you know be able to uh, to use that uh, for referencing so, but on this particular page, I'm really trying not to do that, um, and I I don't I don't use the 3D stuff all that often actually with the um, with the characters. So, because I like I said, I, I want that traditional sort of um, gritty uh, 
life that comes from just you know sitting there hammering out those drawings and those positions and really getting it right that way so uh, anyway and you can see you know with that comes a lot of mistakes too you, you really spend a lot of time like I said you know spitballing and and refining things so here you can see where I completely erased that hand and just went back over and rebuilt the entire thing right there um, so right now working in uh, some of the the folds and drapery of the kind of loose arm of that leather glove so that kind of stuff can be fun always like to uh, to use lighting to uh, to both build up form and guide the page so you can see a number of little things that will come together out of that um, like, uh, I'm going to work on the hair a little bit um, you know, whenever you see the hair come together the you'll you'll always be able to tell your light source from the the way that I put the hair together and I try to treat the hair almost like a geometric shape as well you know so what you see right now uh, as I as I get further into the drawing I realize that uh, I'm not real happy with her placement in the context of, of this this two page spread so I just you know this is one of the beauties of working digitally is I'll just grab uh, the uh, grab that bit that I've done so far and move it up to something that works a little bit better so I'll start working on her left hand a bit now I have this way of of doing fingers that uh, uh, it's funny when I'm roughing in fingers I tend to draw actual little boxes um, it's something that uh, I don't know if Jack Kirby did that specifically but when I look at Kirby's work um, you can always see the boxiness in his fingers and those forms and while they can be really rigid and really you know hard edged and and flat in their own right in that they pick up that boxy form you know the the man's stuff always managed to jump right off the page and I think it's because he was layering those forms in such a way that it just created depth so you know I kind of try to look to uh, you know to that those kind of methods um, you know definitely looking at Kirby I mean the uh, the thing I always tell my son when it comes to comic book art is you know we, we all live in the house that Jack built so um, you know, when it comes to hands, it's something I try to look to. Um, someone else who's really who I always loved the way they did hands, even though they're far from realistic, was uh, McFarlane. Uh, you know, Todd McFarlane would always his hands would always have a ton of expression to them, and they would just go all over the place. But you know, they always seem to play a a key role in the way the character is acting on the page. So. Okay, so um, I think we're going to go ahead and just uh, jump forward in the video to where you can see, um, you know, we finished up the glove, the basic pencils for the glove. You can also see I've added some details for um, defining shadows, you know, the way her head is casting shadows down over the breast, and really working on building up that hair. And, and going back to what I was saying a moment ago, um, you know, this is... Uh, one of those great opportunities to really show your light source, show your form, and build some drama in the image. So, uh, what we're going to be doing here is just, you know, kind of drawing this hair with some gravity to it. We want it to uh, to really help show the thrust of the character down to the ground. You know, she's she's beaten down. She's got a real um, yeah, I mean it's 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 a dramatic point where she's about to pass out, and so uh, we try to use elements of uh, you know of the costume um, or the the design of the character. You know, the hair is an important element of that, the hair and the clothing. So you use those things uh, in artistic ways to help drive the uh, the emotion of the character and, and help tell what's going on. Um, you know, when you're when you're penciling comics you're penciling a page you um, 
you know, you're you're the artist, you're making the images, sure, but you're also the actor. So, um, you know, just like an actor may have to sit and and take some time to think through um, their body language and think through a little bit of their expression and you know, do they lift their eyebrows a certain way? Do they turn their mouth a certain way? Things like that. Um, you know, as a uh, as a comic book artist, you really have to stop and think about that kind of stuff as well. And it seems like it would go without saying, but, you know, I, I can remember many, many times at conventions and, uh, you know, and looking at uh, at artwork from, from younger artists, you know, guys just kind of getting up and running with things I can I can remember plenty of times where you know they may be showing you the action of a scene but there's a difference between action and acting so you know they're not uh, they're not making use of the elements of the costume the elements of the character's design to really evoke those emotional responses so anyway that's it's kind of an important element um, so and uh, just kind of playing on that a little further here you can see you know I'm adding in the gas mask which is uh, or the rebreather which is kind of a uh, a key visual part of of the apocalypse girl design and you know just uh continuing that whole thrust of her being pressed down and everything's heavy and dragging her down to the ground you know um the I like this this approach of the rebreather you know, it's over her arm in this image. Um, it's heavy. It's just another element of of how being who she is is a heavy, burdensome sort of thing. Um, and I know that seems kind of melodramatic, but I mean, comics are inherently melodramatic. So there. <laughs> but uh, you know, when you when you put that kind of thought into it, I think it it shows um, in a lot of ways. You end up. Uh, I think that's what helps build comics that the reader is really going to get invested in. Okay, we're going to jump ahead once more. Um, now you're going to see I'm, I'm removing these uh, these panels that I had sketched in at the beginning. I'm still going to end up with the three panels there in the end, but I just decided that um, that I really am enjoying this this particular drawing and I really want to spend some more time working on that so I was going to remove those and uh, make some adjustments and put a little more work into uh, really the the centerpiece of this two page spread so one of the things that uh, you should note too um, is that you know looking at it in terms of being a, a two pager um, one of the things that that you want to do it's it's very easy to want to take two pages and put your center of interest right dead in the center because when you're looking at the pages abutted together you've got this great huge canvas that seems awesome to work with um, the thing is though uh, regardless of how your book is printed you know, if you're going to print if you're going digital well there you go you're good you know you can you've got a lot of room to play there uh, although that has its own set of constraints but if you're going to print, um, then you have to make sure uh, some little things like setting up your uh, your two-page spread. Make sure that it sets up on where the for, where the left-hand page is an even number, um, and then making sure that your layout of the pages um, doesn't put something dead center because where those pages meet, um, you're going to have basically you're going to have loss right there where the uh, um, you know the curl of the pages as the book unfolds you're actually going to going to end up losing uh, some of your art area there so if you if you place a character's face for instance right dead center of that then it's just going to end up folded and the whole thing is going to fall apart uh, or at least I think so I mean I, I've seen some artists who I like who've kind of been daring enough to do that and I guess from time to time it can work you know I mean there are no there are no true rules in anything with this uh, but there are definitely some important guidelines and that's one that I that I follow pretty strictly is you know, never put something dead center of a two page spread um, I just I think it ends up really uh, kind of falling apart 
So, um, anyway, um, where we're at now is, uh, you know, building out some more of the, the character. Um, I'm really trying to push the foreshortening of this. I don't want it to be too incredibly extreme, but I do need it to have a great sense of depth to it. So, um, you know, I think that just helps play to the, the scenario and play to the drama of the scene. So... Penciling in uh, that the one-legged chap there, um, it's still it's a it's a goofy kind of idea. I don't I don't know where I ever came up with that from, but you know every time I sit down and I draw Apocalypse Girl, I, I the one-legged chaps just is kind of something that sticks with me. It's a real indicative little little thing for her. So. A little more refinement, you know, just spitball and refine it. That's all it is at this stage. It's always amusing to me, you know, it's like when, uh, you know, folks who, who don't draw or, or maybe don't really think too much about, you know, the how of of making artwork like this you know uh, it's it's always funny to me how it, it really i think anyway that it really is mostly just scribbling i mean it's kind of scribbling with uh some educated guesses and then you you kind of you basically fall down a lot and try to catch yourself um is how I like to think of it. Um, and I think the difference between, you know, folks who, who do this and work at doing this and work at drawing and work at art and all that is that we're basically willing to keep throwing ourselves down over and over and over and over and over and over um, and hopefully catching ourselves and, you know, uh, you know, falling down and catch yourself in a way that comes out looking like you intended to do it. So, uh, I know that's kind of a, a crazy sounding way to to think of it in a way because you know I'd, there are folks who who you know artists out there who are very methodical and have a system for everything and um, and there's something to be said for that. I mean there are systems for everything. I have systems for things that I do in a certain way, but still so much of it um, you know when in doubt, when in doubt scribble, when in doubt you know just throw yourself out there and you know go into free fall and then uh, try to catch yourself and it, it, it's kind of a it's kind of cool that way you know I mean it really it really breaks puts you in a, a mindset to be willing to break rules and just do whatever however and you know and let the chips fall where they may so a lot of what you see right here um, you know at this point I've started roughing in some of the environment that she's in you know, hard cracked ground, and then uh, uh, all that darkness below her is where um, the. Um, if you see the previous pages, she has a huge uh, wound um, where she's had her back sliced open. So, at this point, you know, there's blood going everywhere, and she's, uh, you know, she's basically just falling down in a pool of her own, you know, of her own uh, fluids there. So, adding the hat into uh, the foreground a little bit. Can never forget the hat. The hat is sort of, the hat is is the um, her her permanent connection to Papa. So, which you know, if you've read um, the uh, the sampler that's on our website, sixes one dot com, uh, you know, if you go to sixes one dot com, you can find the first ten pages of Apocalypse Girl up there in black and white, and uh, and you'll see you know Papa her her. The, the guy she calls father papa that he you know he well I'll let you go read it but anyway the hat is her kind of uh, her connection to him and and in a way it's also kind of an homage it's funny she's she's sort of like a post apocalyptic indiana jones in a way um just in the way that i see her as far as like action sequences and you know there's there's so many different influences but i really love the hat hat's always going to be there so Okay, we're going to jump ahead once more. Here you can see uh, I've really fleshed out uh, 
so much of the environment that she's in there. I've also uh, added in rough pencils for that uh, wide establishing shot at the top of the, the pages. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is go add back in those three panels that I deleted earlier. Um, and I'm going to do it using the, uh, the rectangle uh, frame tool. Um, and then there's there's a, a preset that I've saved for myself that's specifically for the way I like the Apocalypse Girl panels to come out with the, the thick black border on them. So I'm going to go ahead and use that tool and drop in uh, three panels here in this kind of descending uh, layout. And that's going to get me set up with everything I need to finish out um, this two-page spread. I'll go in and do my pencils inside the panel folder, or the folders for each of those three panels. Um, then I'll add a, uh, a panel for that, uh, a panel folder for the top panel, and I'll be dropping it down behind these three. So at this point, I think you can really start to get a feel for um, how the storytelling and the flow is going to going to work across these two pages. Um, here I'm I'm roughing in uh, a little bit of the figure um, that I'll be going with in panel two. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for this week and. Uh, Hopefully, uh, hopefully next week I'll be able to get my video done and uh, and up on Monday, as I always plan to. It seems like last week and this week were so busy that I just didn't get to it until later in the week. So, you know, bear with me. Um, as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments here, um, or you can look us up at uh, facebookcom slash one media or uh, one mediacom um, I'm Les, and this is Apocalypse Girl Stuff, 6 is 1 Behind the Scenes Weekly, and I will catch you folks next week. Bye-bye.